Hello everyone, welcome into Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah Presents. Um, another tutorial, believe it or not, this little beginner crocheter is going to put out a how do I do something kind of video. This is for my quick and easy um, hair scrunchie. Now, it's not a pattern, it's just something I came up with while waiting for the hubby to get a haircut one day. There was a long line, so I decided to work up some of these. I was going to work on a hat, but it was too hot for hats. Now I use these El Cheapo elastics that I get from the Dollar Tree. The only thing that's important is if you're doing something in a very light color, I wouldn't go for a black band, but the colors don't have to match because they're pretty much covered up. So I take these off. These are the clasp free ones and say there, there's no metal bits in there. It makes it a lot easier to deal with. Now, I use a much smaller hook than one normally would with this size yarn. This is uh, a small four or a three, depending on how it's mar marked. Um, this is the yarn that I made my cinnamon stitches tank top out of. I had some left and I wanted scrunchies to match it. So you take this and I'm using a uh, three millimeter hook. The smallest that I really ever used for anything. It's an El Cheapo one that I got from Wish. I make a slip knot, however you would normally make a slip knot. The first round on these is always the toughest, especially the first couple of stitches, because it's awkward. It's not that it's difficult, it's just awkward to get your stitches up in there. The way I do it, I've got my thing slip knotted on there. Don't try to crochet with your tail. Uh, if you do that, uh, it won't work out. I've done it, it's <laughs> not a good thing. Um, so I lay my yarn over the top go under, pull up that first loop, and make a single crochet. And try not to split the yarn. This is really hard to do through a viewfinder. I'm really a beginner at this, I apologize. Um, but yeah, once you've made your first one, it goes a lot easier because you have something to deal with. Reach under, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull it through. Got a couple on there. Reach under, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull it through. All I'm doing is single crocheting onto the stretchy bit here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and when I get close to the end, I'll bring it back so that you can see how I finish off this round. No sense in you watching me put in dozens of stitches this very way. Before I get to the end, I do want to let you know that something you may want to do, notice how there's a lot of elastic showing through there push this sucker down. Just pull them up and make them real tight. You see now I'm not, I don't have very much done. So yeah, it takes a minute because I'm really slow and I don't crochet like most people where they hold their thread all fancy. No, it's all in my hands all the time. Told you, beginner, self-taught-ish. Pausing again so that you will meet me closer to the end. Okay, hope that wasn't too jarring. A little pause and come back. Notice I'm really close to the end and I'm going to finish up these last few. I keep pushing it out so that I scrunch everything together. And if you're thinking, well, how many stitches should I have? How many stitches did you do? It doesn't matter. It does not matter one little tiny bit. Just keep on crocheting until you have covered up that elastic to the best of your ability. When you get down to the end, it gets a little weird and maybe you don't have it all completely covered, but if you've bunched up the rest enough, oh, sorry about the shaking, um, it will, you'll be able to even it out. I'm gonna put one more in there because I can't help myself. Okay, and notice this is really, there's a lot of stitches in there, okay? And that's exactly what we want because if it's pulled out and stretched, you don't want it to bust or to force somebody to have a problem with it. All right, now we're gonna slip stitch into the first stitch that we can find there, if we can get in there. Or you know what? The first one is where the very first knot is and everything. You know what? I'm gonna go to the second one because it really doesn't matter. Pull through and then pull through we're there, that's your slip stitch. Pull it nice and snug. Chain one. Oh boy, that was an ugly chain. I split it. That's what happens when I use a smaller hook than, than you normally would with a yarn, and this is kind of splitty anyway. If you split it, that's okay. Pull the stitch out and do it again. I'm gonna chain that one, which doesn't like like Crystal Bagaday always says, that one doesn't count as anything. Now 
I'm going to chain five. That's right, just a simple chain. There are no complicated stitches in this sucker, okay? You're thinking, gosh, what in the world is she doing with a chain of five? Now, skip. This is the stitch we were working out of here. You can kind of see if you pull up and look there. We're going to skip one and go into the next one. Just stick your hook through, pull up a loop and try not to get it stuck like I just did. There we go. Yarn over and pull through both of the hoops on your look. Uh, loops on your hook. Boy, hoops on your look? Yeah, I can talk too, right? And then I want to put my hook back through, pull up another loop, yarn over and pull through those two as well. Okay, now we're going to chain five again. And there's your repeat, y'all. Chain five. Skip that stitch right there and go into the next one. Put your hook through, pull through your loop, yarn over, and pull through the two hoops that are on your, your hook, the two loops on your hook. Then we're going to do it again in that very same stitch. Needle through, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the two loops on your hook, and chain five. And don't do that like I just did. <laughs> On these, I tend to, to make them nice and tight because I know that the yarn is splitty and I don't want it to split while it's sitting there. But I love the colors that this comes up with, the way the variegated works out. So I've done my five chains. Skip the one that we're in. Go to the next one. Put your hook through. Pull through a loop. Yarn over. Pull through the two that were on your, your hook. Put your hook through that same stitch again pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through those two that were on your hook. Snug it down and chain five. You're going to do that all the way around. I'm going to meet you at the end because you know what? It might not work out evenly, but that's okay. I'm going to show you that when we get there. I'm going to hit a pause. For you, it'll be a second. For me, it'll be a while. Alrighty, progress has been made. And it was not quick. It ever is for me. Let me move this out of the way for a change here. Um, getting down to the end. Now, if you get down close to the end, now we didn't count stitches. There could be an even number. There could be an odd number. In general, we just don't care because this is a really easy repeat and you're pretty much going every two stitches. So if you get down here and you notice that, oh no, the number of stitches left is going to be weird and it's going to put me right next to this. You can either A, not worry about it or b you could adjust here and like skip a stitch an extra stitch in between or something me i'm just not going to bother worrying about it i'm going to do my five chains you might be able to hear oscar my kitty taking a drink out of his fountain in the background he thought that now was the perfect time to do it because i hit the record button that's a cat for you always feline assistance in any way shape or form and i do apologize for going out of frame like i said this is still quite a new thing for me so keeping things in frame and working through a viewfinder is just weird when we get to the end here we could be done or we could be a little bit extra Four or five. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's five. Okay. But I missed part of that previous. I got the splitties. There we go. All right. Let's put that right through there. Make sure that that doesn't time out so it doesn't turn off my light. Pull through 
are too. I am struggling with this yarn today. And I've made like three of these already out of this very yarn, so I shouldn't be struggling this much. Okay, back through that gap, pull through, another single crochet, and then I am just going to slip stitch in the very next stitch just to kind of make it complete, complete the circle as it were. Okay, now, like I said, we can be done. We can pull through and tie off here and weave in our ends, or we can be a little bit extra. I am almost always a little bit extra. Ask anybody who knows me. Anyway, what I'm gonna do for here, I'm gonna chain another five. Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> See, real life, real mistakes right here on Crochet Life and stuff with Deborah, because apparently my hands forgot how to crochet and this yarn just wants to be difficult. See all that splittiness going on there? Probably caused by me, but I'm gonna gripe about it anyway because, you know, I can. Ooh, how'd all that get undone? All right. And remember, it's a hair scrunchie. Nothing has to be perfect or super whammadine awesome. It's a hair scrunchie. So to be extra, did that five, just slip through that loop that's right next to you, pull it up, cinch it down. Let's do another five. And with this going around and around, you can keep going as big as you want, but I'm just gonna do this one single round. Pull up your loop, pull both through, there you go. Chain five. Go to your next pretty loop, put your hook in there, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through those two loops on your hook. Okay, got a few done there. I'm gonna pause this again so you don't have to wait for my infernally slow crochet, and I'll meet you back around to the other side, and I'll try not to knock this down. And through the pausing and magic of TV, video, or whatever you want to call this, um, I have made it to the end-ish. Notice I have one more to do and then where we started off right there. I'm going to do my five more chains here. You know, another reason I wanted to be a little extra on this, I want more of the colors of the yarn. If you're doing a variegated yarn that has a longer repeat rather than really short bursts, you won't get it all in a small project like this. So I've done my five chains, reach into that loop, pull up a loop, pull through the two that are on your hook and try not to get it all snagged like I just did. Snug it down. Now this here is one of the, that weird sideways one where we started, so I'm not gonna get too extra with it. Two, three, see how that is. I'm only going to do four this time. There's nothing set here. This is a sort of fly by the seat of your pants. Do this while you're watching the TV kind of a thing. And then I'm going to reach into this kind of sideways loop here, pull up the loop, two on the hook, pull it through, snug it down, chain one, and then get the, sn the snizzers and tie off. Yes, get your snizzers and tie off. Good gravy. Forgot him in the other room. Stand by. Okay, snizzers acquired. Cut. Put these back in their little safety hatch. Yes, these are children's scissors that I got on the uh, aisle at Walmart. Fiskers. This is supposedly an eraser. I don't know why you would use the tip of scissors as an eraser, but it's a nice bright pink and I kind of like it. So, I'm going to pull this through. 
snug it down, and then I will eventually weave in my ends. Just not right now. We've all woven in ends before. This is the one that we just did. So we've got more of the colors in there by being a little extra and going around again. I um, did this one yesterday while waiting for hubby to get a haircut. Notice I only went around the first round on this one, but it still looks nice and full and it's gonna look really cute on your hair. I did this one much the same as that. I was just kind of on a roll. And funny fun fact, while I was waiting for the hubby to get his haircut, my doctor was also in there waiting on his son to get a haircut. So we ended up chatting for a bit. Uh, he's a really super nice fellow actually. But yeah, that one, this is one of the ones where I got a little, what I call a little extra, it went that other round. And you can see some of those browns from that yarn in there. I thought this one turned out really cool. I mean, if my hair was a little longer, I'd stack them and put multiples. And this is a different one that I did out of a silver sparkly yarn. Kind of loving that. Don't know how well the sparkle's going to show up on camera. But I went even another extra row on that. But a very similar concept here with a thicker yarn. Let's see. Let me see what color that was behind it. I used a purple uh, hair tie behind it. But yeah, that will look nice wrapped up in somebody's hair. Scrunchies are easy. This is something, one of the things I do if I like a quick project in between bigger things that actually take some thought. This doesn't take a lot of thought. This is the mindless do while you're watching the telly. So you can still hang out with the hubby and watch the telly, at least for me, and um, work on a project. It's also not terribly hot because it's small. I have a really hard time working on blankets and big garments when it's super hot. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you enjoyed it. This is, I'm beginning. This is my first day uh, attacking these sort of tutorials and things and I really enjoy making scrunchies. I made my first scrunchies for Rose Lice Crochet when that was the item of the month was hair ties and scrunchies um, for her Wings campaign and I was able to send in a bunch of them including some big ruffly ones. So maybe there'll be some more of these in the future. If there's something you'd like this uber beginner crocheter to attempt to show you let me know in the comments. I appreciate you coming by and uh, thank you for being here with me on this crochet day. Bye y'all.